Let's meet the artist Chandra Bhattacharya from Shanti Nikatan. The poem Amader Shanti Nikatan and the Rabindra Sangeet being sung by the artist herself. So let's meet Chandra Bhattacharya. No, Shanti Niketan has a different kind of sound and smell, which is uh, may not be apparent to people visiting, you know, but some people just fall in love with this place as soon as they arrive. It happened with me. Even the cows here are very well behaved. Hello, cow. Don't eat my fence. <laughs> so this is where I live and trying to grow a garden. I brought out the camera to uh, for the bird song you know just a moment ago there was so much of bird song around all kinds of birds returning home I guess parrots manas you can still hear them This is the inside of my home as we enter the living room. That is the bed for my two cats who don't bother to sleep here anyway. They prefer my bed or my son's bed. This is a, a portrait of a family, my family. I had done in 2006 and uh, this was done as a, my, it was a satire about, you know, at that time lots of people were, artists were doing, uh, uh, lifting the images of, from photographs and uh, transferring them onto canvas. So what I did was I lifted the styles of artists like, uh, Goga here. My husband, he had a t-shirt with a Goga painting. I copied it very closely. <clears throat> and these are my two sons. My older son, younger son, Kushan and Ujan. And uh, this was done in the manner of Mati's wife's portrait, which is commonly or rather popularly known as the Green Line. And I copied every stroke from two of his paintings, the Green Line and another portrait of his wife in two different uh, styles. One side in one style, another one is from another portrait of his wife. And my portrait I took from Japanese paintings, you know, uh, Japanese prints actually and also Klimt and all those uh, look at the dress here a lot of details <clears throat> and if you watch closely there's a lot of detailing here this is a 3 by 4 painting and it's done with uh, this kind of detailing is done with a triple zero brush, you know. It's an acrylic on canvas. Hey, you let me class class on a girl. Come on, darling, kiss me. Open a girl. Mano, you are my one of the best. Come on, 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 come
আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন আমাদের সব হতে আপন তার আকাশ ভরা কোলে মোদের দোলে হৃদয় দোলে ওরা বারে বারে দেখি তার এই নিত্যই নূতন আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন মোদের তরুমুলের মেলা মোদের খোলা মাঠের খেলা মোদের নীল গগনের সোহাগ মাখা সকাল সন্ধ্যা বেলা শালের ছায়া বিথি বাজায় বনের কলগীতি সদাই পাতার নাচে মেতে আছে আমলকি কানন আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন আমরা যেথায় মরি ঘুরে সে যে যায় না কবু দূরে ওদের মনের মাঝে প্রেমের সেতার বাধা জেতার সুরে প্রাণের সঙ্গে প্রাণে সে যে মিলিয়েছে এক তানে ওদের ভাইয়ের সঙ্গে ভাইকে সে যে করেছে এক মন আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন আমাদের শান্তি নিকেতন হ্যালো my name is chandima bhattacharya and uh, i'm from shanti niketan i have studied here from 1982 to 1987 long time ago i have studied pottery in my bfa which was a five years course in those days and art history in my uh, mfa we called it b fine and m fine and i studied art history because in those days we didn't have a masters degree in uh, pottery so uh, since i couldn't afford to go to any other place i came to shantiniketan and i studied art history which i loved anyway after uh, passing from kala bhavan uh, i got married to my classmate Deepak Bhattacharya who is also an art historian who was an art historian he passed away in 2007 and uh, we moved to uh, Guwahati we joined the part time teachers and then from there uh, my husband got his final and uh, permanent job in Vishwabharati Shanti Niketan to where we moved in 1991 So uh, when I started working it was in Gulbarga and I was at that time unemployed my husband was the one who was uh, who had joined the college there so I was idle sitting there all day not knowing what to do one day I got very frustrated and I sat down with uh, a drawing book that I had and uh, indian ink and a pen crop will yeah and some yeah i had some basic drawing instruments and just sat down and drew a picture now the thing is that i was not trained as an a visual artist per se you know like painting graphic artists or sculpture artists the way they are trained in picture making or image making i was a design student i did pottery so i was very uh, in confident in that way uh, like what to make as a picture i had composed some pictures in my first or second year but uh, those were long time ago this was at a more uh, mature state in my life and i don't know really how to handle it so i just uh, drew something and then i waited for my husband to come back to give his approval <laughs> he was an art historian and he also had a uh, he was supposed to have a good eye for art and uh, he always uh, advised the other classmates with their you know with their work when he was we were students together 
uh, so I was like my I was palpitating a little. Anyway, when he came back, he was very, uh, you know, he was uh, full of appreciation, and that encouraged me a lot. And I was, I thought, okay, I'm doing the right thing, and that was the beginning of my journey as an artist. That was in 18, sorry, <laughs> sorry, that was in 1990, I think, yeah, 1990 or 89, nine, yeah. So um, after that, you know. Um, my now my drawings uh, as we go along and uh, when you get to see my works you will see that uh, they are very personal i mean the whole content is very personal uh, that is because uh, as i said i had not learned any visual picture making so what i did as an artist as a painter uh, or a drawing artist was that i drew what was familiar to me. In the beginning, it was uh, kind of uh, uh, not very realistic. But uh, as days went by, I became more and my drawing became more and more kind of intricate, more detailed, more textured, and uh, uh, more realistic. And also, elements of surrealism started coming in. Uh, which was something I think inbuilt in me because uh, uh, I had always had very weird, macabre kind of dreams ever since I was very uh, small, you know, a little girl. So that had always been a part of my existence, having dreams, having nightmares rather. But to me they were not nightmares, they were just dreams. I was not scared when I had them. They were just very macabre kind of. Those imagery that didn't come in, but uh, I saw world in a different way. And the night fascinated me more because night, I think, night time has more mysteries. Night time has more uh, things to hide. Lots of crimes happen in the night. Lots of all kinds of people come into their own in the night time. People make love in the night time mostly. <laughs> so, uh, it is, more, people become more private in their life, when in, in the night time. So, uh, night became a important element in my pictures. And uh, I drew my inspiration from, you know, I had a very wide art historical background. Uh, we had a very vast uh, syllabus in Kalabhavan as uh, general students, as of course, as a uh, specialization, uh, specialized in art history also. I had to study a lot of uh, different uh, art history of different uh, cultures and countries in different ages. So of course I had a lot of, uh, I had seen a lot of pictures. So out of that, what inspired me most, uh, what stuck in my brain was of course, our own Ajanta murals, the way they composed their pictures, you know, they they didn't follow the usual method of perspective, academic method, what we called. Uh, their objects were bigger or smaller or, you know, according to the importance of the objects. Uh, and the same happened in Fariston art also. There was no formal perspective at per se. And... Uh, Far Eastern art also influenced me, and uh, Mughal miniatures, Indian miniatures, and from the Western art, uh, I would say the works of Kitai, whose uh, language also, to some extent, was like that, you know, very arbitrary, realistic, but very arbitrary. So that kind of influenced me. So it was a, a very mixture of different elements that... Uh, and uh, I don't think any artist is uninfluenced by anything. We all d draw our influences for, from outside, from other artists, from nature, from photographs, anywhere. Uh, so uh, my inspiration, my subjects came from my life. My style was drawn from 
all this in the beginning and then I kind of uh, built my own style from that. It evolved as I, it, at, as I also matured and I evolved as an artist. Then in 2000, around uh, 2000, uh, 2003-04, I think I started doing uh, acrylics on canvas. I enjoyed it. Uh, acrylic I chose because there was no waiting as I had heard uh, oil, uh, my artist friends who uh, used oils, they had to wait a lot and I'm an impatient person that way by nature. Though uh, my artworks take, uh, like the bigger ones, they took around a month or sometimes three months to complete. That way I am very patient, but you know, like waiting in the process, that about that I am not patient at all. So I couldn't wait for things to dry. So I chose acrylic, which is a very versatile medium anyway. I could use it in any way I wanted, so that was why I chose it. And I used it in my own manner. Uh, Nobody, nobody had to teach me how to do, use it also. Uh, my subjects remain more or less again the same. Around to 2007 I lost my husband. After that my subjects also changed to some extent. From previously my uh, compositions you'd see they are very crowded because lots of things were happening around me and I am an observer, a, a very observe, oh dear, observative person, yes, I'm, I observe a lot of things around me and I study a lot of things in detail. I do like to, uh, I like to uh, work in detail, I forgot to tell you, I like to work the texture of things, I like to show the texture of things through my brushwork, I mean through my pen and through uh, <clears throat> on canvas when I work through a zero 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 brush, triple zero brush. So when uh, after my husband died, I, it was the whole world seemed to collapse back on me because everything depended on me now. It was not like I could relax and things, uh, you know, like before that I could I had my set of duties at home, my husband had the, his set of duties and the whole household was running in different, uh, on their own, different and uh, this thing, axis. But uh, after his death, everything was dependent on me. So somehow my style changed and I, not style, my the subject changed. I began to do a lot of uh, self-portrait based paintings and the crowdedness went away. It became more empty and initially, uh, of course, I did a lot of those uh, loneliness kind of paintings. I was lonely. I wanted to get away, fly away. I had this tremendous desire to run away from all this. So that showed in my paintings. The process was very uh, painstaking. I I prepared my canvas in, say, I think 15 or 20 layers of paint, different colors, finally finishing with a gold wash, which g gave it a very uh, raw silk kind of a texture. <clears throat> and then on that I uh, did the final painting. So the whole image uh, looked very rich. If you see it from uh, up, you know, uh, up front. Uh, after that, a long time, I didn't work. I couldn't work. I was busy. Work. I went away to Bangalore. I had a very tough time there, you know, working in a school. And uh, I had a pretty sort of difficult time there, you know different different things happened in my life. I couldn't draw. There was a long hiatus from work. After that I came back here and now I've been working since the last two years. Uh, even before that actually, yeah. I now have started working again in paper. 
I am working. Uh, I am enjoying doing paper. And the first for the first time since the pandemic started, I have my the subject of my paintings for the first time in my life has shifted from myself to the outside because now I see that uh, since I began observing how the people suffered during the pandemic when the lockdown was suddenly you know announced and people were uh, forced to leave their houses in the cities the uh, the laborers the daytime workers they had to return to their homes in the villages how they were so helpless that they had to walk home for miles together on foot they had no transportation and uh, every day i thought ki something would be arranged but nothing was done <clears throat> that kind of made me angry and angrier and and i started uh, doing these uh, drawings and uh, my now my uh, from me my focus has kind of shifted to the outside world maybe it is because uh, life also changes life changes from youth where you are more into yourself and then you become more and more as you grow your your children and uh, your family grows distant from you you grow more wiser <laughs> more philosophical <clears throat> and uh, in a way you begin to see things as they are that essentially you are alone in this world and uh, then many things don't matter anymore and my whole journey of uh, art has been a very a uh, kind of a, a excavatory exploratory journey in a way when i started it was from nothing from a history of nothing i just started fr from zero i explored i excavated deeply i went deeper and deeper into my you know uh, like what to draw was the main thing i find uh, working painting drawing very difficult as i uh, like finish uh, like making a composition or composing a picture is very difficult for me it takes a lot of time to compose a picture it doesn't come very easily because what to draw is a big issue actually what to draw and how to draw it how to make it at the same time aesthetically you know aesthetic um and also like uh, i'm not one of those people who like uh, just sit there and draw something from what i'm seeing uh, like it's more like a study when you s sit and draw a landscape for example people can draw landscapes by looking at it but and also you know absorbing from it that is also another thing that uh, uh, for me it is more like drawing from the inside drawing from my subconscious so uh it is a very deep process and i have uh, every time i do a picture i dive deeper and uh, every time i find it more difficult to find a, a a subject or a subject that's it a composition or even if a subject the composition how to compose it so people who say that drawing is easy painting is easy i do not think they are really seriously painting they can make a picture attractive they can do any number of pictures they can do any number of paintings but i don't think the picture really conveys anything i mean people can look at them but you know people can look at a beautiful picture of uh, say radha krishna standing there or 
a picture of a uh, beautiful flower composition and that's it i mean what next what do you get inside how do you what do you get from it if there is something inside if somebody can uh, make even those pictures convey something deeper than what they uh, look like on the surface then it is a very successful picture but if it is only on the surface only the surface is very beautifully done skillfully done very beautiful brush work everything is perfect even then something is lacking sometimes the soul is lacking a picture should have a soul a picture should give you something you know other than just a superficial visual pleasure for 2 seconds as long as you look at it and then you turn from it you forget it you know it's just like uh, seeing a hindi film a uh, govinda film forgetting it but if you see a film say bhatar panchali or say a tarkovsky film or a, some uh, uh, more in, like a filmmaker who makes deep meaningful films it resonates within you you keep remembering it it's like that a painting also should convey something deeper than what it shows on the surface so um i try to do that i hope i do um i don't know whether uh, it conveys as much but <laughs> that is how i work <clears throat> so these days i work with uh, pen and ink and a brush and i work with waterproof inks i use lots of different i like um, working with different kinds of pens i'm enjoying using different kinds of pens also these days there's a lot of variety available uh so that's my that's my work that's about my work thank you i hope you enjoy looking at my work thank you and thank you so much regarding art education i've seen three or four kinds of art education first when i used to be in school myself art education meant the teachers drawing a rose or a, you know like a circle and then another circle two dashes for eye and one semicircle for a tail and that made a cat so we all had to copy it out that was one kind of art education and uh, then again uh, there was no other th- and it was not followed though i was in uh, i appeared for my icsc exams we didn't have any art curriculum then uh then in kala bhavan i saw uh, the patha bhavan which is a school here in vishwabharati i saw students they have like seven or eight art teachers and all in different you know specializing in different subjects like weaving sculpture painting or uh, pottery and they have actually they learn so many different kinds of uh, art uh, forms here and not only that because uh, we have kala bhavan and sangeet bhavan and all the other departments you know science and uh, arts and fine arts and music uh, 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 departments and the languages departments the school children every time there is a, an exhibition in kala bhavan museum the children are brought like it is a, actually mandatory i mean all the children uh, they are brought to see the exhibitions so they get uh, uh, and even the smallest children youngest ones you know even in class 1 2 like that and uh, children say in uh, in kindergarten they are taken out into the nature to study the different uh, trees flowers so i learned names of different flowers and 
uh, trees from my son when he was in kindergarten here. So that is the kind of education we receive in school here, where the fees at that time was just 10 rupees a month. You know, uh, it was a truly international school in that way. And another, I mean, similar kind of education also uh, I've heard is uh, imparted in uh, the Krishnamurti Foundation schools too. I do not know how much to what extent uh, this kind of freedom is given there, but still at least they have a separate proper curriculum for art and they have got also several teachers. Then again there are the international schools here. I myself taught in an international international school. Like when you, we entered the school, there was this big plaque announcing that affiliated to IGCAC, uh, CBSE, blah, blah, blah. But I know for a fact that uh, even for CBSE, we didn't have an art cur curriculum. I was the art teacher. I used to teach them art because, you know, inspectors used to come for face value. And I was there basically as a, uh, what do you call it, a craftsman. Uh, uh, a working craftsman who used to regularly uh, change the 14 feet by uh, 5 feet or 4 feet uh, display boards which were around like 20-25 display boards all across the school. Basically I had to decorate all of them, not the students. That was my job and in my off time I used to teach the students and we didn't have any uh, examinations for art so art was technically not a part of the curriculum but you know it was written IGCSE curriculum so and the children paid a hefty fees looking at all those you know bruhaha. so that is how you know uh, art education is uh, <clears throat> imparted in our country uh, which is very basic so um, I think that, you know, uh, unless, which is, uh, unless art becomes a part of the educational curriculum from school itself, people are not going to be uh, receptive to fine arts, visual arts. Because you see, uh, India as a country is very, very uh, advanced in terms of uh, the visual arts not just the finer visual arts, but you know, it was there in our every stream of life, say in our textiles, in our temples, in our floor decorations, in our wall decorations, in villages. And uh, even now, I, I live in Shantiniketan, when I go through the villages, walking sometimes, the santhals just so beautifully, you know, they make relief on the walls of the villages and paint them sometimes very beautifully they they like to decorate their houses you know in the in a way that uh, we do not do we leave it we leave everything to the uh, you know the professionals and get it done by professionals and the more money we pay we can afford to have a good mural done by somebody or even a horrible mural given the taste of people. But those people, they really do some really beautiful stuff. The fact is that, you know, it is there in Madhubani. It is there. Women are still uh, painting a drawing. Then in uh, Gond art, for example. Then the Dokra uh, uh, sculptures. It is there, not just in Bengal, in Orissa, it, in MP, uh, in Bihar also, I think. So it's there everywhere. Uh, it's part of, you know, our Indian tradition and Indian arts. And uh, if you go to a tribal art fair or which uh, focuses on cultural aspect of the in, of India, then you will see so many craftsmen uh, of, from so many different parts of the of our, of our country that you normally don't see. They just seem to come out of the woodworks and and then they spread out their beautiful, you know, uh, 
there are the wares and so many like leather work from uh, Andhra Pradesh and and the Patachitras of Midhanapur and there's so many other I can't just you know I can I mean it is there in India so much how much is being done for those artists leave alone the urban artists I was being asked to uh, talk about how much uh, support does the government accord to the fine artists, the art students or to the practicing artists. Like in other countries, practicing artists, they're actually given a kind of uh, social security. I mean, even thinking about it kind of makes me I find it very funny actually thinking about it in, in the context within the context of our country. I mean, think of the number of 99.9% .9 of people are poor. They don't even get to eat. Government will give money for art. I mean, look at Indian people. I mean, something that everyone, I mean, India is mad about one thing and that is cricket. But is there no other sports in India? Of course there are. There are so many other sports that are played equally passionately. But uh, who gives a damn for those sports? Even football is being played so much. They have clubs for football. There are, I think, hockey clubs and hockey is being played. They go to the Olympics. They win medals. Weightlifting, archery, shooting, gymnastics, athletics, so many other things. But does... Uh, are these uh, sports ever encouraged? Are these people even encouraged? When they come back, there's nobody to receive them at the airport. But look at how cricket is being uh, hyped up. I mean, in this country, how can one even expect that, you know? I mean, that uh, the government will do anything for us, for uh, people like... Uh, you know, practicing artists who are who are forced after they pass from art colleges. Many of us we want to you know practice art, but then after some time we are forced to join some kind of job. And most of, at least from uh, Kalabhavan Shantiniketan, most of the uh, students go into get into teaching, teaching at schools, and you'll find most of the. Uh, boarding schools in India, they have got uh, art teachers from Kalahavan. That is one reason is because uh, the students are not bad. I mean, it's very talented students come out from this college. But they are not, they do, do not have an opening here. For some reason, Shantini Ketan and Kolkata artists, especially Shantini Ketan artists, not Kolkata even, they're very neglected because uh, when there was an art boom, all the galleries used to come here. They used to just line up to buy art for, from, you know, certain uh, famous artists who were there. I mean, there was a line, my long line almost, and there was like fighting amongst them, like who would get what, you know, that much of... Uh, desire and uh, greed was there for these things. Once the market fell, nobody came, nobody came back. So what will happen to this? Uh, at that time, all of us sold. I mean, we were always uh, asked for this exhibition, that exhibition, we were taken to art camps. After 2008, nothing. What happened? No one, I mean, everybody forgot us. What happened to our, this thing? That is because we are in Shantiniketan. Nobody looks at us. Yes, in Bombay there is a, I think people still buy art and there is a politics, art politics very much, there is very much so. There, there are no true promoters in this country, art promoters in this country anymore. There were perhaps only two people who really promoted art and that was Mr. Alkazi and before that Keku Gandhi. It was Mr. Alkazi who single-mindedly he brought up so many artists. Even me he supported. Like he gave me four exhibitions. Uh, everything is very uh, market-driven. Everything, of course it is. it should be market-driven. But, you know, there should be a 
because there is no education in art from school upwards the art critics in our country are those people who write good english how many art critics are there who know something about art who have studied art history who write about art in a really very critical manner and those who write they have got their own coteries and whatever art fairs or uh, we have say for example kochi biana it is completely taken over by kerala they don't even look at other parts of the country who is working what kind of uh, art fair is that i mean art biennale is that like inside your country you're only promoting your artists is that a very fair choice really is that a true picture of our country's art it should move around but lately i have been uh, curating a few shows uh, mostly uh, three or four i have curated it started with uh, one lady from michigan she owns uh, this thing uh, an organization which is a multicultural organization called uh, akshara yeah so they have a uh, festival every year called rasa festival which was actually a physical festival of dance music poetry literature everything all kinds of uh, they used to invite people even from india they used to invite people to go and perform there but since the last two years it has been all online so this year she saw my work on facebook and she invited me to curate a show for them uh i curated a show of six indian artists and one bangladeshi uh two bangladeshi artists actually yeah so that was received very well and uh, that kind of encouraged me to curate another show for ganges this time again with uh, women artists i relate better with women of course uh, because they because i myself <laughs> being a woman i can read women's mind and work, uh, from you know what they are coming from in their work i can read their works better i can understand and empathize more with their works and i think women also you know because they are um, they are used to multitasking they are used to um, working so closely with their family after they get married actually they have children they do everything very closely from their heart you know because they cannot afford to cook without their heart into it otherwise the cooking would be bad they cannot afford to look after their children without their heart otherwise their children would be neglected so what it it is in their makeup to do things from their inside which is why i think most women really serious women artists uh those who uh, those that i choose that i i like they their works are very uh, unique and um, different and they it, it very they all work very differently they have all created their own individual languages which is a delight to see in this world of you know fads and fashions so i have curated a few shows i am in the process of curating one so again for sreshi's rasa festival and i am enjoying it i am also writing when i curate i write about the uh, works of course i write that i think that actually encourages me to curate the show more i write like to write about uh, their art in a critical fashion so so far the artists themselves say that they have rediscovered themselves through my writing like they have been painting but some of them uh, remark that oh i didn't i can recognize now why i do this thing you made me see it so i said wow that's great <laughs> so yeah i think i love writing also <laughs> So that's all I have to say. Thank you for listening to my rambling.
बाय नमस्ते फीचर्स ऑफ माय आर्ट आर माइन्यूट डिटेलिंग एंड द पर्सनल बेस फॉर द वेरियस different themes that i have worked with over the past 30 years of my career as an artist i've always loved miniatures of any kind hence the predilection for minute details in my work although my drawings are not exactly small and paintings have been quite large the process of working on them is miniaturist with the finest nibs or brushes that i can find to define the various textures of elements I define depth through density of textures and textures by the different looks of the surfaces of things skies skin dark night fabric leaves fur stones etc loki jokhon ashbe tokhon kothay tar dibir thai देख रिचे अपन पाने पद्दी नाय पद्दी नाय जख आस फिर छे के दे प्रभात बतास फिर छे के दे प्रभात बतालो चेता म्लान हताश मुखे चे आकाश तोरे कत गोपन आशानी से गहन रि शेषे अगाध जलर तला होते अमल कुड़ी उठल भेसे कत गोपन आशानी को गहन रि शेषे Thanks for watching this video. Please support Art Keeper. Subscribe and share with your friends and family. Thank you so much.